Welcome to our shiur. Our uh, Monday night shiur. Tonight is the 8th of Tammuz. Tomorrow night is the 9th of Tammuz. It's the Hilula of none other than Rabbi Yosef Dayan. The one we do the tikkun all the time, the Ve'avot Hebron with the Hakafot and everything, Lababich already for 10 years, we used to go this, that. So uh, we'll see, maybe we'll do something tomorrow night also. I was planning to do something, I'll talk to you guys privately afterwards. And uh, our tikkun was done, that's why. <laughs> then it's a salt we're done, that's why. Like, <laughs> after 10 years. So. We're in our shiur. I'm planning something very special for you guys tonight. Something you guys never heard in your life. We're in our. Yes, Rabbeinu. Right here. We're in our uh, lectures of the end of days. I changed the lecture from end of days to days of Mashiach. I felt that the end of days sounded too depressing. You know, like we're, go, we're going to the end or something. <laughs> Days of Mashiach Tzidkenu. They once asked Ritzak Kaduri. I was going to tell you guys this later, but I'll tell you guys this already right now. They once asked Ritzak Kaduri. You know, the Gemara and Masachat Sanhedrin. We're not going to learn the Gemara today. That's going to be the next shoe. We're going to do the Gemara in page 97. Whoever has a Gemara Masachat Sanhedrin in his house, learn page 97, 98. If you learn those two pages, you're going to see things. I know Ratai Elohim Zulatcha. Things that are just... Uh, it's crazy. 97, 98. So uh, the Gemara says over there, the world is going to be 6,000 years. The Gemara says that the world is going to be for 6,000 years. So, uh, don't give me now your evolution stories, this, that. There's an answer for everything. Don't worry about it. If they have an answer for everything, they have an answer for everything. Too. Don't worry. We got the Torah. I'll take that over anyone any day. The world, there is a rabbi in the Gemara. It's Amar of Katina. Of Katina says, the world is going to be 6,000 years. We're in the year 5,780 from the creation of Adam. So the year 6,000 is about 220 years away. And um, when, the, when Rav Katina says this, nobody argues with him. Now we have a rule in the Gemara. Whenever somebody says a halacha or a memra in the Gemara, there's no dissenting opinions. We take his opinion. This is the this is the one. This is the one because if there was if there would be somebody who disagrees, he would have said it. Nobody said anything else, so that means that's it. Rav Katina said it. That's the halacha. That's the way. We, what's what does the word halacha mean by the way? You know what the word halacha means? To walk. That's why Bukharians like to drink Johnny Walker. We like to walk in the path of halacha. So the, we like to walk. What do you mean? Your legs take you to where you need to be. You understand? The halakha, that's why Rav Nachman the Breslev is a famous drush he has on Hanukkah. He says Hanukkah is about a walk, to take the walk. You gotta go, to, you gotta go on the walk. Your, your legs, David Amelak says, my legs take me where I need to be. That's what he says. So when Rav Katina says it's halakha. It's Paskin. Nobody argues them. The whole Talmud, not even one opinion says differently. There is, though, a different opinion in what he says afterwards. He says the world is supposed to be 6,000 years. Then the Rav Katina says 1,000 years is supposed to be destroyed. And God renews his world. After Rav Katina says that, Abaye says, no, the world is not going to be in a state of chaos or destruction. Tohu, they say, for 1,000 years, but 2,000 wow. years. So we de- over there, we do have a dissenting opinion. Was the halacha follower of Katina or Abaye? Now, Abaye, Avraham. Who's Abaye? Who's Abaye? Abaye is one of the greatest authors of the Talmud. Like, there, you don't go one page of the Talmud without saying his name. A page and a half. Like, his name is in every... In fact, the Talmud was originally, originally called Havayot Abaye Everova. The Conversations of Abaye Rav. But yet, interesting, the Arya Kadosh doesn't take Abaye's... Uh, opinion as the halakha, rather Rav Ketina. What does that mean that the world is going to be in a state of chaos from the year of 6,000 and on for 1,000 years? After 6,000. After 6, means we're 5,780. Year 6,000 is the cutoff. Yeah, in 220 years. So, Rav Ket- so, so the Rav, they asked Rav Yitzhak Kaduri this question. We like Rav Yitzhak Kaduri. He's close to our generation. He passed 2008, right? No? Did he? 
no, earlier, 2002, 2004. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> 2005. Around there, around there, around there. So, and remember, I remember when he passed away, it was a big tumult in the Jewish world. In the religious Jewish world, it was especially the Sephardic world, it was, a, bit, it was a, a lot of craziness going on. Why? Because we have a tradition that Ben Yishchai told Rabbi Tzchak Kaduri uh, that he will see the Mashiach. And he passed away and everyone was like, is where is Mashiach? So then, you know, once again, we have a date and we have no, you know, no results. So like, like our last year, we gave so many dates. The Ari, Ramban, this, that, and no result. So Rabbi Sakaduri, they asked him this question. Now, there's plenty of answers to the question I just asked, but it's not the, this is not the conversation for that. They asked Rabbi Sakaduri, what does this mean? The world will be in the state of Tohu for 1,000 years. That means that means Hashem is going to be machriv the olam. He's going to he's going to destroy it and start anew, or not? They asked Rabbi Sakaduri this question in his book. You could check this up. She'elot v'chuvot divrei Yitzchak. There's a book like that. Questions and answers. They asked Rabbi Sakaduri. One of the questions they asked him was this question, it's recorded, and he answered, he's like, the people who think the world is gonna be destroyed, is a f they're, they're fools. That's not what's gonna happen. What does that mean Hashem will renew his world? We will all be renewed in a sense of spirituality. What does that mean? Starting from the year 6000 and on, all of the, the human beings, not just the Jews, if we think that the world was created just for Jews, we're in a big mistake. Understand? The world, in fact, the, the prophet, I, I think Isaiah says, Vahayitim or lagoyim. You should be a light unto the nations. That means it's a two way street. Vatem mamlechet kohanim. You are a priestly nation, the goy kadosh. What are we a goy kadosh for? For the rest of the world. And yes, we see an awakening in the world. I just want to tell you guys one thing, for example. We said dates in our last shiur, in the time of the destruction of the second Beit HaMikdash, there was a man that was widely believed to be Mashiach. His name was Bar Kochva. We call him Bar Koziva. He went a little too left. He went too, 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 too left. He went too left. So, Bar Kochva, the Rambam says, it's not my words, open up Hilchot Mashiach of the Rambam. It's his last, last page. In Hilchot Melachim, in Shoftim, he writes over there that... Bar Kochva's arms bearer was Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva! <laughs> Rabbi Akiva. You guys still didn't get it, I think. <laughs> Rabbi Akiva is the greatest sage of the world. There's nobody greater than Rabbi Akiva. We say, we're talking about Rabbi Akiva. He is the greatest sage. All the Talmud, the Mishnah is Aliba, the Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is a student of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Gabriel Ai, Rabbi Akiva. Everyone's a student of Rabbi Akiva. The man became religious at the age of 40 years old. You got to give him kudos, right? I want to tell you one story about Rabbi Akiva. He was 120 years old. It was the day before Yom Kippur. His student, Rabbi Yeshua Garci, brought to him a bottle of water for Netilat Yadaim and to drink. To drink water, Rabbi Akiva. It was the day before Yom Kippur. It was the 9th of, 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 Tish, of Tishrei. He comes to him. The Roman said, you have too much water. He spills half of it out. He comes to Rabbi Akiva because Rabbi Yeshua, he told him, Rabbi Yeshua Garci, you don't know that my life is dependent. I'm 120 years old. I need water to drink and it's not I'm going to eat the bread. So he says, okay, Rabbi, what can I do? The, the, the guard spilled half of the water out. Rabbi Akiva said, okay, what can we do? Like his, his Rabbi, Nahumish Gamzu, used to say, Hakol Gamzu Tova. He takes the water, starts to do the Tilat Yadayim. So his, his student, Rabbi Yeshua, got to the Rebbe, he says, what are you doing? Drink the water. You're doing Tatiya Dai, you're going to eat the bread without the water, you're going to die. He says, me am I. In my life, I never went over the words of my friends. What does his friend say? You have to do Nitilat Yadai before eating bread. So the Gemara says, in his life, at the end of his life, he was like, imagine what he was when he had the strength. That was Rabbi Akiva. We all know the story at Yom Kippur. Tornosrofos Harasha came to him and he ripped his flesh from his face as the Gemara and Masechet Brachot says the story detail by detail how, the, how they ripped his flesh off his face on Yom Kippur and that's why till today you guys ever realize in the Slichot of Yom Kippur where do we add over there? Bishut Rabbi Akiva we say right? You know, whatever there's a Slichot over there on Rabbi Akiva 
And many tzaddikim passed away on Yom Kippur. This is the reach nichoach la Hashem. This is the reach nichoach. So Rabbi Akiva is everyone is going. Rabbi Akiva was the arms bearer of Bar Kokhba. He said that Bar Kokhba or Bar Koziva, as we call him now, because as you know, as history sees, he wasn't the Mashiach. And not only wasn't he Mashiach, he messed up big time at the end. He killed his uncle, Rabbi El Azar Hamodai. He killed him, and that signified the end of Betar. Until today, we have a blessing for the end of Betar. What is that blessing? Anyone knows? Birkat Amazon, the last blessing of Birkat Amazon. Hatov, Metiv Lako. You know all the last bracha over there. That's for the this, that's for the ending of Beitar over there because that was. But you know what? That was supposed to be the end. That was supposed to be the end. It was not like it was. If Rabbi Akiva said it, guess what? It's true. But it didn't happen at the end. Huh? Rabbi Akiva lived exactly to 120 years. Three great sages lived till the end of 120. Rabbi Akiva, Hilel Zakein, and Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai. Each win. Each one lived the same exact life. 40 years they were Amaaretz, 40 years they had, they learned Torah, and 40 years they taught Torah. But uh, isn't that abnormal for that time? And who guess who else, who's the, who's the fourth one? Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, thank you very much. So, going back to what we were saying, Rabotai, the Gemara says 1,000 years the world will be destroyed. 1,000 years. It doesn't mean destroyed Mamash, it means destroyed from the, from the Yetzer Hara, destroyed from the evil inclination, destroyed... I want to ask you guys a question. This is Rav Nachman Nebrasa says this. There is a beautiful channel on, uh, what do you call it, YouTube. It's called Breslev Tzion. Subscribe to it. It's a good channel. Breslev, you know. Breslev yeah, but authentic. Authentic. So, I'll tell you something about, I want to speak on this channel, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. I want to say, because... When I was single, I learned uh, Likotei Moharan, but I learned it. Really? Yeah, but I met. I even remember my first Torah that I learned inside that uh, it was the Torah of the Kapayim and the dancing. When you mamtik netzach vehot, and I said, what is this, the Ariya Kadosh over here? He's just saying the Ariya Kadosh. He's, he's, he's just... Anyways, let's not, get it, let's not get too political, you know, I don't want to be political correct over here. Anyways, Rav Nachman Mabreslav says that uh, when a person... When a person does a mitzvah, he's able to be melakit, the melakit, to, 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 to uh, select the nitzot. What does that mean? When you have a scenario in your life and you have a question, uh, right now, should I, um, I don't know, watch a show on Netflix or should I learn Torah? At that moment, there's a fire going on in Shammai. A gladiator ring. Your Yetzirah and your Yetzirah Tov are fighting. And what does one say? He says, Let him watch. It's not the end of the world. All day he was at work. He was this, that. The other one says, What do you mean? It It's time to do to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yalla. It's time to learn Torah. What was a man created for? For what? For what? To watch Netflix? That's why everything is for free, right? <laughs> now everything is for free. COVID. This is the much Maseya Satan. Maseya Satan. Yeah. When you stop yourself from going on that thing and you said, no, I mean, you know, it's so hard, Abraham. It's so hard. At that moment, it's so hard. You're like, I'm tired. I have nothing to do. All day I was, I want to watch something. But when you stop yourself at that moment, Neria, when you stop yourself at that moment and you're yeah. like, I'm going to open. Open up. You know what you should learn? Something that you like. We have a defeka in our head. We were, you got to learn Gemara, Gemara, Gemara. But sometimes you don't want to learn Gemara. That's how rest of says two things wake a person up in their life. I'm good with rest of stuff, right? <laughs> I, I subscribe for the channel or no? I could go yeah. on. So sure. it says two things wake a person up from their sleep. Learning stories of Tzadikim and learning uh, Tanakh. That's what he, does he say that? He says that. I'm telling you he says that. He says that. Sometimes when you're asleep, doesn't mean that you're actual asleep. It means that your mochin, your chokhmah bina vedat is asleep. You need to wake up. You're awake. 
You need to wake it up. You open up a Sefer Yishaya, a Sefer Melachim, a Sefer Shoftim. You wake up, you read it, suddenly what happens to you? You want to find something. You're, you feel alive. You got to wake up. Rabotai. Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri says the world will be mitchadesh. When Mashiach comes, Bezat Hashem, you're not going to have that test anymore. And now I'm going to tell you what I brought this whole thing with Rav Nachman Rebrez Lava. Rav Nachman says, if a person would really understand, what's a man's three biggest ta'avot? He says three things. It's in Likutei Moran Tinyana. I think it's the third Torah over there, or second. There's the three things. He's called it a trifecta. Money, food, and women. That's the three things. This is the trifecta. This is, this is the Illuminati. Yes, yes, yes. That's where food is the worst, right? And what does he say? Food is the worst. That's what he says. No, he says, I'm just telling you what he says. I don't know what everybody else says. Okay? He says food is the worst. Why? At the end of the day, what can't you live without? And I want to tell you guys one thing. Tell me if I'm wrong. All a person's yiridot, his, his going down in Allah Hashem, comes after weddings, yushvos, bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, brit milahs. You go over there, you let it out, you eat good, you think, you come home. Show me a person who could open up a gemara. Forget about gemara, open up a chumash afterwards with Rashi. I say with Rashi, because what else are you going to open up a chumash with? Right? What are you going to open? You cannot. Why? You're heavy. You're heavy. This heaviness is not something... Uh, it's, a, it's a normal thing. We all know. When you're heavy, you can't learn. It's impossible. That's why the Chachamim, they wouldn't eat food after Aravid. They had dinner. They dive in Marev. They wouldn't eat it in the night. The Ramban says, Nachman, he has the Igeret HaKodesh. A procl- how to be, how to have good kids. Nachmanides, he writes over there. You want to have good kids? Don't eat at night. When you eat at night, your stomach is heavy. Your thing is heavy. Your zera is made out of all the stuff that you just ate. All that heavy stuff. And the child that comes out of there, except on one day. When is that? Shabbat. What do you guys, Malachim over here? What do you guys study him over here? <laughs> Only Shabbat. <laughs> what? I mean, after uh, night is night. Listen, Marv, we, after Marv, you could eat until Marv. After you daven Marv, you shouldn't eat. Or the Ramban says you ate food. Yeah, you should wait three hours to have, understand? To have those... To have the children, I always like to speak in a clean way. I'm sorry to the people who oh, listen, but I cannot night. say it like that. No, I'm thinking at night, at night, at night, at night, at night. And I'm going to tell you guys a secret. You guys are young. You want to wake up in the morning with, with strength to serve Hashem? Don't eat at night. You want to wake up in the morning? Don't eat at night. You want to eat? Have a cup of water with some crackers or something. First of all, it's all, f- it's all fake hunger. It's not real hunger. Haraya, Babasala used to fast for six days. Straight. Lahavdil, Elif, Havdalot, I don't want to say them, but just to teach you guys a lesson. There are monks that could go without eating, I don't want to say. And it's there, of Goodman locks coming down to earth. Yes, it's true, these things happen. When The less you eat, the more your nishama is alive. Because you have to understand, your nishama is separate from your body. It's not the same, food is physicality. Your neshama is spiritual. Your neshama wants to live. Now tell me something, guys. When is the most spiritual day of the year? When you're Everyone fasting. said the same thing. When you're fasting, how is that possible? And what's the most spiritual tefillah of Yom Kippur? Neila, how? You just fasted for 25 hours. And you're in, you're in Ila, you're coming, you're crying. Most people cry in Neila. Shaharit, for sure, not. Shkoya, <laughs> don't do that. Shaharit, for sure. You know, except if somebody's gonna do a nice uh, the the the, the vidui of uh, of Rabbi Nisim, you know, the famous vidui. Sure, I heard by the way. I remember one time in our show. Who knows if we're gonna have a big bed Knesset in this year? We will. We will. You're saying we will. You're a navi. That's it. Mashiach can now come. I remember one guy was so hungry he was driving me crazy, crazy. One year for Yom Kippur. 
And then I served all the food after Yom Kippur, watermelon, there's that. <laughs> Everyone threw up. <laughs> Everyone threw up. Why? HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Ani me'mit v'mechaye. I give the koach. And me'mit, you have the koach. And that's why, the, by the way, the halacha, not halacha, but the minhag is right after Yom Kippur, what do you start to build? Okay. Your sukkah. And I said, you said build your sukkah. Well, you don't have any power to build your sukkah. No, you do. You don't get it. Because to do a mitzvah, you don't need the body. You need the neshama. Okay? So, back to what we are saying. We got into a big tangent. We need to understand, the world will not be destroyed. It will be renewed. Our Yetzer Hara will turn into our Yetzer Hatov. That means your Yetzer Hatov right now will be our Yetzer Hara. With the Yetzer we have right now. And your new Yetzer Hatov is going to be a... Uh, I don't know what we call them. First round pick? Four and one. What? What? It's foreign. It's a new Yetzer Hatov. It's a new... Why? Because we're going to get to the level of Adam HaRishon before the sin, before he ate from the Etz Hadad. And before he ate from the Etz Hadad, his Yetzer HaTov was what we, uh, what, his Yetzer Hara, he didn't have a Yetzer, he just had a Yetzer HaTov. So that, our Yetzer Hara will be out. Yetzer HaTov will take his place, and now, but the world doesn't end. Who says that the world ends? The world continues going, it means we still have work to do. People do we don't know how long the world. No, what Rav Katina says, the world is six thousand years. Is this world we that we know? Years. The world joke. He doesn't say what happens afterwards. There is a Ramchal that says it goes to ten thousand years. There is a book Brit Menucha by the Avraham Merimon Sfaradi. Telling you guys secrets right now. Don't learn this book. The Brit Menucha. First of all, you're not going to understand anything you read over there. Number one, Second of all, people who learn this book, bad things happen to them. There was a famous story, Rabbi Yitzchak Kaduri says, I'm sorry about him, see? Rabbi Yitzchak Kaduri says a story that in, in his yeshiva, Porat Yosef, before the Jordanian War, in 1970, six day war in 76, right? So, in the, before that, 67, 67, 67, you see? That's why you have the noon at the beginning of your name, you know what to do. So, in 1967, before that, there was yeshiva, Porat Yosef, the Ben Ishchai builder, the Yitzchak Hazan, with a big benefactor in India. India used to have a big Jewish uh, community, very rich and big. The, Sos the Sassoon family. And his name was also Yosef. Yosef. His name was Yosef Shalom, I think. Yosef Shalom. Rabbi Shai was Yosef Hayim. And they built Prat Yosef. There was a one Ashkenazi rabbi. Ashkenazim like to learn Kabbalah a bit. Uh, they, yeah, they like to learn it That's like. Uh, the, they like to learn all the like the Kabbalah Masid stuff, like the angels and the names and the seventy-two letters. They like to get really into it, and it's they, that's the dangerous stuff. Wow. That's the dangerous stuff. So he tells the uh, rabbis and stuff, "Teach me the book Brit Menucha." By Rabbi Avraham Meri Sfaradi. they told him it's not good to learn this book. Bad stuff happened when you learn this book. Bad stuff so happened. There, why, why would you? So no Torah, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't erase. So you don't Wait, we don't erase Torah. They're, when you're ready to learn it, you'll learn it. Don't worry about it's it. The, yeah, no. So they told Rabbi Yitzchak Kaduri, you're gonna be the one that's gonna teach him. <laughs> Rabbi Yitzchak Kaduri, you should know one thing about him. He had one thing in his life. He never spoke a word. When he used to teach Etzachayim to Rabbi Mordechai Eliyahu, Rabbi Mordechai Eliyahu, he taught him Etzachayim. He used to make somebody else read. He wouldn't read it himself. He would make somebody else read. And then when they used to ask a question, he used to be like, no, you can, we're going to get to the answer. This is Rav Mordechai Yosef himself, the story. Anyways, I don't want to teach him this book. I don't want to teach him this book. I don't want to teach him. At the end, he started to teach him. A couple of weeks inside this book, his son, back in the day, they had gas in barrels. His son fell into this Ashkenazi's Rav son. It was a Tamit Chacham. His son fell into a boiling barrel of gas. I don't think how he's gonna live from that. You understand? Boiling gas, nift, nift. You know, black gold they call it. Yeah, black. It's oil, the crude oil. He fell inside. It was boiling hot. And after that day, he never went back to learn this book, Brit Menucha. He would teach you say yes, no, we're gonna get to the answer. 
he would why would he, why would he never talk by the way i'm going to say this to you learn this this is a very this is a golden uh, advice Rabbi Tzakaduri had an anger issue as a young boy he had a very big anger issue the benish high the benish high told him he said to him Yitzhak Yitzhak is a very powerful name he said Yitzhak uh, you gonna be a big tzaddik he was his sandak and he told him but you have you cannot get angry in your life never get angry he says to be ha to, to never get angry you should do two things in your life never talk when you're next to people and always laugh Look at any video of Takaduri. What is he always doing? Eh? He's always laughing. Always laughing. You could, you could ask that. Is he fake laughing over there? Like he's laughing, laughing. And you see his three teeth. Towards the end of his life. You know, he had three teeth. He's laughing, laughing, laughing. They want to ask him. But Mordechai Eliyahu was very close to him. He says, why are you always laughing? He says, from my young age, I had an anger problem. And the Kabbalah says, the Kabbalah. I should have said that that way. Yeah, that sounded very bad. Kabbalah says anger is the most detrimental thing to Aliyah in the Torah the most the worst that and it's so bad it's so bad anger it's so bad that there is even three Kavanot and Shmona Yisrael to break your anger you don't have that in, in, in ego in jealousy in, in cheapness in whatever or take laziness take all Tavot you don't have in anything only in Kaas and not only that, the Ben even has a teshuva for a person who got angry. But that's a person who really got angry. You know, some people get, they just get angry. They take something, they start breaking things. Like, he's, like you know, in Harlem, like it happened uh, today. Today, the police people came, they started cha. Those people have to dip in the mikveh, I don't think 151 times. They got to dip over there, 151. Today it happened, today, mamash, tam mamash. 150 times you have to dip. 151 times you have to dip into the mikveh. Who the ben ishchai for tikkun la'avon akas? So we see Rabbi Tzachak Duri was isha uh, eshkolot. By the way, he was the kind of mekubalim. He was the elder mekubal in his generation. After he passed away, I don't know if anyone took that title. By the way, they said there was much before him. They they saw each other, but he was the elder mekubal before him. Maybe Shalom Sh Sh Shmueli, but he doesn't. He doesn't have a kahal. He doesn't take a thing. It's hard to call him Zakan Mekubali. Who might I say no? They say Rav Saraya the Belitsky was uh, the Zakan Mekubali after Yitzchak Duri. I don't know. I'm nobody to say who was and who wasn't. Now, Rabbi Yitzchak Duri had a friend. His name was Rav Tzion Bracha. Our shul is called after him, Lashem. When we wanted to name our shul, when we were independent. Not July 4th independence, but when we were independent, we had to think of a name. The first name of the shul was supposed to be Shara Shamaim. Shara Shamaim, the gate to the heaven, like by Yaakov Avinu's ladder. <coughs> and then uh, we were talking, we were talking. Uh, my father wanted Or Meir, the light of, the light of lights. And then I said, let's call it a Rev Tzion Bracha, Lishem. Why? It's, hum it's a humble name. It's a name that doesn't mean anything for the sake. For the sake of what? And it's saying, for the sake of what? But the name is actually included in the name itself. Why? L'shem is an acronym for La'akama, Shechinta, Me'afara, to raise up the Shechina. Everything in life has to be done with Tzniyut. With Tzniyut. And I'm very close. In fact, if you, anybody's here in Simcha Torah, we have a special song that we made in the name of uh, Rav Tzion Bracha. Yitzav Hashem et Abracha Bishchud Rabbi Tzion Bracha He was a big Mikubal He was a student He was a student Of Rav Salman Mutsafi Who had smicha from Rabbi Udaftaye Rabbi Udaftaye had smicha from Rav Abdallah Somech He was the last uh, Talmud to have smicha from him Rav Abdullah Somech was, the, I think, the brother-in-law and also the Rebbe of the Ben Yishchai. We have his picture till today. The Ben Yishchai says in his book, Ben Yoyada, that he was the Gilgul of Achaz HaMelech. Achaz was the father of Chizkiyahu HaMelech, King Chizkiyahu. Achaz, his father, was a very wicked king. 
Chizkiyahu, Chizkiyahu, Chizkiyahu HaMelech, who was supposed to be Mashiach, as the Gemara in Sanhedrin says, took his father out of his grave when he became king. He tied his father's legs to a horse, and he rode him throughout Jerusalem. Like, this is, is a, he was a Rasha, Mirusha, like no other. This is not what we have to question right now. His father, your mother, your grandfather, that's what he did. And the Chachamim Hodulo. Chachamim said you did right. And the Chachamim of our generations, Chachamim of the Sanhedrin, they said you did right. Achaz came back in a Gilgul as Rabbi Abdullah Somech, the brother-in-law, I believe he was the brother-in-law, and the Rebbe of the Ben Ishchai. And guess what happened? After he was buried, they dug him out. The, the Ishmaelites dug him out. They desecrated his body. It was a couple of months, I believe, after he passed away. I believe it was a couple of months, and his body was completely whole. It was a big Kiddush Hashem at the same time. Then they put him right back. Rabbi Nishchai cried a lot. He cried, he cried. Why did this happen to my, to my Rebbe? And they told him in uh, Chalom that he's the Gilgul of Achaz HaMelech. What happened to him, happens, is going to happen to him. And he was his last Tikkun. What? This is written in the Ben Ishchai's book on the Gemara, Ben Yehoyada, if you want to see it over there. Rabbi Shimon Agassi writes this in Shari I want to tell you one last thing about the Ben Ishchai. You, you should know the Ben Ishchai. You know, a lot of people say, oh, Ben Ishchai, Ben Ishchai today. You should know one thing about the Ben Ishchai Kadosh. He had a book called Shara Gilgulim. Not the Ari Shara Gilgulim. His own Shara Gilgulim with all the Gilgulim of the rabbis of his generation. And his son, Rabbi Yaakov Chaim, saw his... One day his father was on, he went to see this book, what's his Gilgul, and he saw what his Gilgul was, he almost had a heart attack. He was the Gilgul of one of the kings that says in Masechet Sanhedrin, there's no Olam Haba, Achav, Achav, and he, he, he went insane, and his father said after that, I'm, I'm, I'm burying this book, nobody's ever going to see this book. Till today, I don't know who has this safer, nobody ever saw the light of it, after, and Rabbi Yaakov Hayim, the son of Ben Ishchai, was the Gedol Hador in his generation. He was Baal Gilui Eliyahu, not like today they say, Every other tzaddik nistar is Baal Gilui Eliyahu. He was mamash Baal Gilui Eliyahu. We have a safer, by the way. Chidushim amitiim mishorish nishamata kisei akavod. Anyways, Rabbi Yudaftai was the Talmud of all these rabbanim. And every time I speak about Rabbi Yudaftai, my heart skips a beat because I feel very um, like this is an unconventional rabbi. This is unconventional. This is a rab that's and oh, this is this is I don't know who it's anyone who could ever come to his level. He was. Such a nice Rav. This guy saw the Malacha Mavit in his, in his eyes. The Mal- he saw the, the weirdest things in the world. He fixed the Nishama of Shabtai Tzvi. And he, do, do I have to say any more words? This is a Mashiach Sheker. I want to tell you guys what he says about Mashiach. This is all an introduction to get to review of Taya. Just to tell you this Chizayon, this vision of what review of Taya saw in the year 1936. This is in the height of Nazi Germany. Word was already getting out. We know the Holocaust happened, started in 1939, right? The bombing of Warsaw was 1939. 1936, from 1930 till 1939, Hitler was in power. Yemach Shemov Zichro. And the Jews didn't get the hint, obviously. They thought, okay, it was some fascist that's going to be in power. He's going to... Actually, the truth should be told that many Jews actually supported him in Nazi Germany because they thought that it was good. The Jews should know that they're, that they're not in their homeland, this and that. And uh, what happened was that in 1936, word got to Iraq where Rabbi Daftaya was living over there. He, in this time, he was writing his perush. We all know Rabbi Daftaya for his book, Minchat Yehuda. That's not, that's not his book. Minhat Yuda was the thing he wrote uh, between Mincha and Aravit. His oh, real book is Betle. Yes, his, his real book was Betlehem Yuda. Betlehem Yuda. His real book is Betlehem Yuda. The Etzah Hayim. This book is learned by every Mikubal since the day this Rabbi wrote it until today. Nobody moves from the words of the Betlehem Yuda. It is known as Perush Rashi on the Etz Chaim of the Ariya Kadosh. Nobody moves from the Beit Lechem Yehuda. This is the first stop after what Rashi is to the Torah, Rabbi Daftaye is to the Etz Chaim. You should know that. This is the rule. This is the rule. And he made it so simple. And he was the first one that said, thanks to him, he said that everyone could learn Etz Chaim, 
Whoever is not worthy will leave by itself. This opened the door for so many more learners, so many more people to want to learn. And we see the truth is the truth, that many people think they want to learn Kabbalah. They come to the Limud after, after four lessons. Yeah, you suddenly have five people in the class. But he had a vision. At least we have five, you're saying. So he's saying, he had a vision. Now this vision is about Mashiach Tzidkenu. You saw this in 1936. Guys, bear with me. I don't want to... I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read the Hebrew with you. If you guys don't think I'm changing the translation, I'm going to summarize it. But you could see this whole story for yourself, this vision. He writes this in his vision, in his perush, on Etzachayim of Dariya Kadosh. It's Shar Chavav, gate 26, Shar Tzelem, the gate of the Tzelem. Over here he talks about how human beings are born, Dariya Kadosh. Chapter 2. If you want to see this for yourself, I gave you the coordinates. You can see this for yourself. The yes. Mm. Pray to Hashem. Maybe one day I could sit down and translate this thing. In the year Tafresh Tzadik Vav, 1936 1937, before I published my book of Beit Lechem Yehuda, they showed me in my dream in the 10th hour of Aravi, that means the 10th hour of the night. It's two hours before dawn. Two hours before dawn, he had this vision. The Gemara says that the dream that you have towards morning is a true dream. Why? The dream that you have in the beginning of the night, it's probably a nightmare or from the Shedin Yehudayin because you ate a lot of food. That food has klipa in it. It gives you the ability to have bad dreams. For example, a person has a dream today that his teeth fall out, he shouldn't worry. He shouldn't worry. Why? The Shedin Yehudayin, they put this dream inside of him. You understand? Back then, if a person would have a dream of his teeth falling out, he would fast for a week. That means he would lose his parnasach, shalom. And they showed me in my dream how many sparks are left inside the klipa, the Samech Mem, until Mashiach comes. That means when, when, the, when Adam Arishon made the Avera, when the Egla Zahav happened, there was a certain amount of work that needs to be done by the Jewish people until we could get to the Goel. We call those things sparks. Nitzot. Nitzot. So they showed him how many Nitzotzot are left. This is the year 1936. How many years ago is that? 84. And I see in my dream, he says, this is Rabbi Daftaya. You like Rabbi Daftaya, right? Yes. This is not written in Minchat Yehuda, by the way. I see in my dream the Shekhinah. I perceive the divine presence. And I see it go inside the Sphira called Bina of the Klipa. That's called Tehoma Rabbah. The Bina, just like in the Kedusha, we have 10 Sfirot. In the Tuma, there's also 10 Sfirot. Mirror, mirror. Yeah, mirror image. The, the Bina, which is a very high Sfira of the Klipa, is called Tehoma Raba, the unending depth. When a person is depressed and he feels like there's no way out, he's in Tehoma Raba. Chas v'shalom. Chas v'shalom. He says, I see myself going inside Tehoma Raba. And I see with me three other men, two other rabbis. I don't know who they are, he says. He says, I'm standing in the north. That means to the left of the Shekhinah. And I see it going down into the Klippah, the Tehoma Raba. The, the endless pit. And I said, I don't see a figure. The Shekhinah is not a figure, God forbid. I don't see anything. It's not, but I know it's there. I, I feel the divine presence, he says. And I feel it, and at the same time, I perceive the color Tchelet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Korach. You guys, remember Korach? What was his whole fight with uh, Moshe? Tchelet. And the Tchelet. When do we say Shema? Yeah, light blue. When, when, when do we say Shema? When we see the Tchelet. Rabotai, remember one thing. Saying Shema in the time, the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai says it's like learning Torah. When you do that in Shema, Arabi Shechai is like learning Torah. And I feel myself going down, me and these two other rabbis, I don't know who they are, I cannot feel who they are. And we're standing like little children holding on the mother's uh, skirt. 
I feel like we're tiny little uh, children holding on to our mother. And she's standing in the middle of what's called Bina de Klipa. And as she stands in the middle, I feel like all the Klipot from Bina until Malchut of the Klipa suddenly start to get heated up. Like he says, he, he compares it to a person in sleeping in the middle of the night that has a bad dream that he can't hold himself, has to come out. That's exactly what the klipa feels when the Shekhinah goes down inside of it at midnight. And I feel that the Nitzotzot HaKdusha, the holy sparks, this is Rabbi Taftaya's own words, Rabbi Taftai, I gave you the coordinates, you can check this out. I feel like, like it's going up from under. It's like going up like, a, like, a, like you know when the rain comes down in a hot day, the humidity, like you feel the steam coming up from the earth. It's just like flying up. The King Sosotak Dushad is flying up, flying up, flying up. But I feel that the Shekhinah doesn't want to stay there for a long time because if she would, Mashiach would already come, so she leaves. That means the Shekhinah doesn't want to stay there to take out all the Nitzotzot. She could. It leaves. God's divine presence leaves from the Klippa. That way the Klippa will still live. Hashem wants the Klippa to live. So we could have, we have work to do. We have work to do, Rabbi Isai. We have work to do. The Nidmeli, and I see myself looking inside the Klippa, and they show me how many Nitzotzot are left. This is how many years ago? 84 years ago. And I see that in the beginning, there were 50 sacks of klipot. Like 50 wheat sacks. Wheat. Like, you know, those cocoa rice sacks? In the beginning of the chet of Adam Arishon, there was 50 sacks. That's why the Zohar calls it the Yovel. He calls Mashiach Yovel. Yovel is one year, the 50th year. He sees, I feel, I feel like it's 50 sacks, and they're all empty. What's left in them? You know, he says when you empty out, they're still like, you know, stuck in the cr between the cracks. And that's what's been going up, he says, for 84 years. Till today, that's what's been going up. The, the Kedusha is it's stuck inside the Nitzotot, inside the Kedusha. And he writes over here, who are those Nitzotot Kedusha? Souls of human beings that have to be born into the world. That's why the first mitzvah in the Torah is to do what? And that's the meaning of the Gemara in Masechet Nida that it says, And Ben David ba ad sheyichlu kol anishamot shebagu. Ben David doesn't come until you bring as many children. First of all, what do we see from this vision? This vision, it's a vision. First of all, we should know one thing, it's close. If this what he saw 84 years old, the sacks were empty, and it's all what's... And no, this was 1936. This is before the great sacrifice of 1940, 1939 to 1945. The great korban. The great korban. This was before that. So imagine how much birurim happened. And guess what? Don't think we got Eretz Yisrael just like that. Even though it came through the way of the area of Rav. But don't think it just happened just like that. This is a divine thing that happened, Rabbi Yisai. Don't think of it like that. Don't think of it. It's not something simple. It's a zechut you need to be in Eretz Yisrael. It's a zechut. Three things are bought through suffering. Eretz Yisrael, Olam Haba, Keter Torah. That means all three of these things are equal. I want to tell you guys a Gemara. I don't remember which. which it's one of the Babas, I believe. Rava says... A, a, a Talmud Chacham outside of Israel is half of a Talmud Chacham inside Eretz Israel. But when we go, but when this guy goes to uh, Eretz Israel, he's worth double of the one in Eretz Israel. It's Baba Batra. So that means we're worth four of them. That means each Talmud Chacham in, in Eretz Israel is worth four. Exactly. From here, we're worth four. But are we, in our in our in our thing. In our in, in our uh, ikar, um, in our root, in our root. So, this vision of Rav is supposed to give us a lot of chizuk, uh, Rabbi This is not. This is, it's a hayim, you guys. I'm not making this up. It's a hayim. Now, I wanted to read you guys a small thing from Yishaya, 
But I don't think I have time right now because I have something to do at 11 o'clock. So I want to go straight to the Otrot Haim and Shari Kedusha. But I want to tell you guys one thing. We have to have We learn the Ritzav Kaduri. We learn about the Rebuild of Tai's vision. There's much more to learn. We still didn't learn the book of Isaiah. There's a couple of prophecies I want to read to you over here. But people are not telling you these prophecies. And I want to tell you guys a couple of things that it's going to give you a lot of chizuk for Talmud Torah. You know, guys, I'm going to tell you guys one thing. When you leave a shiur Torah, you have to be invigorated. You have to have that, 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 that what? Drive. drive. I like that word. That drive to do more mitzvot. You have to. If you don't, I didn't do my job. I didn't do my job. I'm sorry to say this to myself. You know, maybe that's that's the problem. That's my problem. I didn't do my job. You have to feel invigorated. You have to have chizuk. You have to go. Yehu mechayil lechayil mitzion. Rabbi Yisai. Who knows? Maybe the ten guys sitting inside this room. The mitzvah that we do. The Tana de Beliau says knish tachada. One, one. Just get ten men. That's all I need. Ten men for them. I will bring. I want to say in our next year we're going to learn about Rav Shlomo Molcho. Who is Rav Shlomo Molcho? You got, you're going to be the, the writer of the Shulchan Aruch. See the writer of Shulchan Aruch, called Jewish law. He wanted to die the death of Rav Shlomo Molcho. His Maggit says, Shlomo Bichairi, I believe he says, calls him. Shlomo, my chosen one. He died in Kiddush Hashem. The Caesar, the Holy Roman Emperor, killed him on Kiddush Hashem, burnt him alive. Uh, he had a chezayon. He also had a vision. I'm going to teach you guys this next week. I'm going to tell you guys this safer. It's going to uh, blow you up even more than this. This was good. That's even better. That's even better. And I'm going to tell you guys a secret next week. Why? Why? The Gemara and Masechet Sanhedrin that says, even if all the generation is Rishayim, Mashiach will still come. We have to wonder, what does that mean? You understand? We have to see what that means. And, when, and we didn't answer the question, how come all the Rabbanim gave dates and it still didn't come true? What do you mean? They, they didn't get it right? We're gonna, we didn't answer that question yet, but we're out of time. So we still have a lot to learn. This is not a simple thing. And we still have to give a shiur. What can we do to bring Mashiach Tzidkenu? Berach Amim. What can we do? What can we learn? What can, mitzvot can we do? I have a lot of stuff to tell you guys. It's not enough time. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu bless us with bracha, hatzlacha, zman, yishuot gedolot. Yeshuot parnasa bi ilu nishama le ktsia bat frecha and may be refuash le ma le efrad bat? Huh? I didn't hear. Yeshua? Ushra. 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 Okay, I never heard of that name before, but if you say. And it's not been Miriam, but Miriam. And may Hashem bless all of us of your boy side. Please leave this room today. You have to say what you uh, uh, Leave here with invigorated spirits. Leave here. Do a mitzvah. Please, for me. Do a mitzvah. I should know that I did my job tonight. I did my job. Leave here with a mitzvah. Don't leave here, please. Don't don't go on uh, internet. This, that. Do a mitzvah. Say kretsha on the mitzvah. Say it with me. Say it with uh, the, you know, the dish they say. Tachat or Do say it with please, Rabbi. You're doing me a mitzvah. You give me the kwa because if, if that's not going to be the case, and I want to do my job. I want everyone here to be me ten ve'yacholam nevi'im. Who's going to get that? Everyone should be nevi'im. Who cares? Everyone should be gedolador. Amen. Amen.